this is Josh Taylor with Trade Advisor Pro, and I want to thank you for checking out our video today. Now, before we get started with today's free Forex training video, I want to give you a chance to pause this video right now and go to our website. Trade Advisor Pro offers you free Forex training, free Forex training videos, and trade alerts. And folks, you do not want to miss our trade alerts. We send out a bunch of trade alerts every month that are top rated in the industry. We send you our exact trades right to your inbox. Pause the video now. Go to TradeAdvisorPro.com forward slash free. And all you have to do is register and then come back to this video and we'll be sending a lot more goodies to help you with your Forex trading. Enjoy today's training video. Hey everyone, it's Josh Taylor and Happy New Year. It is January 5th, 2014. And we're coming out with you with the Forex Market Preview. This is a Sunday. And the, uh, the Asian session will be opening up in about four hours. And so we're going to start going through some of the pairs that I've been working on. I'm going to take this a little slow today. Because I've been asked by a lot of our customers to dig down and start doing some of these Forex Market Previews again. We have not done these for a while. Because honestly, I've just been so busy focusing on where the market's going. Um, to sit down and record these videos takes quite a while, um, but I'm going to go through and start analyzing some of these currency pairs, so let's dig in. So the first thing I'm going to look at is the Euro USD, and I'm doing this live, guys. Um, obviously, you're watching recording, but I'm not pre-looking at these uh, these charts in advance. I'm kind of going to go through them, doing a top-down analysis at a very small level, just to show you some, some key levels and how I look at key, looking at key levels and trends. Uh, so we're going to start. I'm going to start here looking at this monthly chart on the Euro USD. So if you're looking at this monthly chart, uh, there's no way to zoom back out of this a little bit longer. Um, you can see that <coughs> over the long term, that this long term high end trend has kept itself pretty good. Uh, in fact, it, it rejected, came back up, it shot up, and now it's kind of coming back down again. If we can see this pair break below 3,500, I could see that this thing could continue to work its way back down again um, in 2014. <laughs> but this is kind of we're kind of at a limbo s stage here. So we, I usually will look at a monthly chart. I don't look at the monthly charts all the time, but when the monthly is showing me something strong, um, taking trades, um, especially entry levels, looking at where the the monthly is compared to the, to the weekly and daily, does make a major difference. In this case. I'm holding on to this area over here to watch very carefully to find out if price is going to break below this. In other words, did it shoot up and all of a sudden reject because price was not able to hold above that um, long-term resistance level. Um, so I'm going to keep an eye on that. Let's go look at the weekly chart. The weekly chart, <laughs> you can see we have key levels. Let's see if we can draw in some more key levels here. We do have... <laughs> key resistance up in this area here. We got a long way before we hit that. Um, <laughs> we had some right in here, which is around the 3600 range. You can see where price is kind of hovered and balanced. And now it's broke below that again. So on the weekly, <laughs> we're showing that uh, it's still in an uptrend, but we could see a significant pullback here. Um, I'm not really seeing a lot here on this. So let's look at the daily. On the daily chart, however, we've seen a, a major rejection. Right up here, we had this key level here of 38, um, you know, 38.30 range, 38.37. Uh, it broke as high as almost 3,900, rejected very, very swiftly, and then as it continued to co break back down, what I would be looking for is a buy down here. We 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 wait for as this thing is trending up. Uh, we have higher highs and higher lows. You have a low, a high, a lower, a higher low than this one, a higher higher, and it keeps going. You see how it's tear steps? We had a pullback, and it's continued the same pattern. So you can see it's not very difficult. A five-year-old can see that this pair is trending up. However, how long that trend will last, we don't know, but it could still last for a long time. But we will, do want to look at that a pair does not just shoot straight up and down forever. It goes goes in cycles. So as we are working our way up, and now we're seeing over the last few days the euro has dumped off significantly, um, we would be looking for a buy at the next uh, a potential, at least a bounce at the next significant um, key level, which would be right here around 34.96. And I do believe we already have a buy <laughs> level sitting there. And so, um, I think, yeah, in fact, I'm pretty sure I need to log in here, and um, I think my 
pro my pro members are already have a pending trade sitting at 3496. Um, but that's where I would be looking for. I would be looking if price can pull back down here another 90 pips. Uh, Friday the market closed at 3586. We need another 90 pip pull down slightly below 3500, which is a key level, and for price to bounce. Uh, if it continues breaking through, then obviously we're going to have this thing run for a wild ride for a little while. But I think we could see a, a significant hit and bounce right in that level. All right, let's take a look at the euro yen. Uh, the euro yen has been moving up very, very strongly. If you look at the um, <coughs> weekly chart and monthly chart, let's look at the monthly chart. You can see that price <laughs> has been significantly swinging up for quite a while since uh, you know August of 2012. So we're talking about the last year and a half. This has been a significant upswing. Um, <laughs> so on a weekly basis, we're seeing the same type of thing. Very strong uptrend, very strong uptrend. Now, here's, the, here's the trick on these trades. Because the style that I trade, I, I've come to know after almost 10 years of experience in the markets, uh, actually about almost yeah, a little over nine, so this year it'll be 10. Um, that as price goes up and up and up, and every time you jump in the bandwagon on a trade that is trending up strong, seems to be the time when you get a significant pullback and you end up getting stopped out. I am all about not getting stopped out as much as possible, so I'm, I'm looking for these pullbacks. So right now, we've got to find a key level. So if you look at the daily chart, uh, you can see that we have a key level right here at, at 442.60 ish range. Uh, there's also another one at 40.94, so almost 4100, uh, where price is broken down a little bit before 41, uh, below 4100. Um, but price has come down to this level here. In the last couple of days, we've had the euro dumping off. As we start going through this analysis, you're going to see a lot of the euro trades have dumped off significantly, um, which actually put my pro members into three euro trades. We had a bunch of trade setups in advance. This will happen. The euro moved so strong, it took us into three of our setups, which I don't like. I don't like being in three euro cross pairs at one time because if anything nasty happens, uh, you know, you get stopped out on three trades. That rarely ever happens. Um, it's happened, I think, a couple of years back, a year and a half ago back, we actually got stopped out on a couple of trades in one day on the same pair because we had a significant um, a abruption in the market, I guess you want to call it. So right now, I don't see a lot in this pair. However, <laughs> this is a very cautious area. Friday, as the market closed, um, price did <laughs> break below this level, and it started to move its way back up. But it's still in limbo. It didn't significantly break above this level, and it's still kind of at this level, so I keep an eye on it. Knowing what the euro is doing across the board right now, it's dumping off. Uh, I don't know if what happened on Thursday and Friday, the, the dump off is going to continue through this week, or um, if we're going to see a bounce, and that was just an, an anomaly in the market, and that was just a, a correction in the market. So right now, uh, because I'm already in a couple euro trades right now, I'm not going to get into this pair. However, I'm, you can see key resistance, le key levels. You know, we have a small key level here, right, right where the market's at. Um, and then there's a key level right in this, this area. And if it breaks down here, we could see it go range bound for a little while. We could see a pull right in this area uh, as the market opens today and tomorrow. We could see the mar market bounce um, that, that we don't know. So I don't see a lot on this uh, trade. I do have a, a buy position. I think it's at. Uh, I forget where I set this at. I'm going to end up closing that, that pending trade. Somewhere in, in this range here, I had a, uh, I had a, a trade at 38.80, I think it was, 38.30. Uh, somewhere in that range uh, a while back, a few weeks back, and it's still pending. I think we're a significant far distance away from that trade to the point where I'm, not, I'm just going to cancel that pending trade. But again, on Euro Yen, I'm not seeing a lot. Um, that uh, a, a true opportunity to take a trade on this pair just yet. All right, so let's look at Euro Pound. This is one of my favorite pairs because it tends to channel very well. If you know a lot about my trading style, I look for two different things. Number one, determine the trend. You buy with the trend. <laughs> I try to stay away from counter trend as much as possible. Um, and I wait for significant pullbacks to key levels and uh, to take an entry. So for instance, like on this weekly chart, you can see that this uh, 3450 range is a key level, even though it was mid-range in here. If you look in here, look over history over a long period of time, it's just a key level to some level. Um, this also is a key level, the 8600. 
and uh, so I look for price changes right around those areas for price action to move in, in a different direction or bounces or significant um, turnarounds in the trend and this t this pair tends to trend and channel what I call so so anyway the, sorry about that get back let me get back there I got lost my train of thought so I look for the trend I focus on doing trend trading or I do also do uh, channel trading or ch trading um, the sideways market and so as we see this pair it's going sideways one way or the other either up down or sideways but 80% of the time a, a pair tends to trade in a range or what I call a channel okay so you can see that this pair tends to channel very well this is a daily chart squeezed down very very tight just so you can see how this thing tends to channel had a lot of amazing trades in this in this channel here and it held very well broke out for a while and came back into the channel as you can see pretty close uh, but now <laughs> we're gonna see that this pair is slowly but surely working its way down in fact if you're starting right here if you start looking at this pair we are say, seeing this pair continue to work its way down I'm gonna zoom this in just a tad bit so we can see what's going on okay so so we've got a key level here 8335 as price was pulling its way down I took several good great trades over the last couple months I've been trading this thing like crazy have done exceptionally well on this pair however I did work on taking a bounce on this trade a few days ago to take a take a nice little bounce the market did bounce and I was up a, a decent amount of pips I think 40 50 pips at one point and then the euro just puked and you can see that this thing has just dumped off uh, and now we're in this fighting mode I have a stop right down here uh, and um, right be below right around this range of this mark I could end up getting stopped out as the market opens up here in a little bit I'm not that far away it's you no know, it is what it is um, if that's the case, if if price pushes down hard and drives down below this these these lower these lows into below the 82.50 range, I would be looking for the market to pull back, and then I would be looking for a sell position here, which is where I actually bought previously. Uh, it just looks like the range as we're squeezing its way down um, into this kind of pennant. I guess you want to almost call it. it's kind of a crappy looking one, but price could end up being squeezed south especially as the euro is weakening right now and the pound is strengthening right now so I don't see anything on the euro pound but you can see that you know I would potentially you know if price works its way back up to 83 uh, 35 which was my entry point on this trade I'm gonna close it break even and potentially take another sell um, to because it looks like overall this this down push is beginning to work its way now a lot of it's going to determine again this 8250 range if price can go below that um, or or not or if, if we're just going to hit and this is going to be a bottom and we're just going to start working our way back up so we'll skip to the next pair because I don't see a real lot on that one now let's go to Euro New Zealand now this thing oh my gosh this thing dumped off uh, significantly on Friday you want to go look at the monthly chart we don't see anything in a monthly chart it's just kind of going sideways between um, let's talk, show you right here between these these levels right in here ish okay tapped a little bit above you want to see where most significantly they're hitting right about one seven all the way down as far as right around this one six range so I, you would be left on looking at a bounce right in, in any of those directions if you get price to hit on on a monthly chart uh, the 17 or slightly above 1.7 or about one point above 1.650 you could see a significant upswing all right so let's look down at a little deeper detail on a little shorter term chart chart let's look at the weekly chart now here's what happened in the weekly chart this pair has been ranging very well between uh, in fact we took, took a lot of trades on the 7100 mark 7000 mark and we're, we were for a long time we were actually buying at the 6440 mark and selling uh, at around um, uh, about, about 7100 we sold a several of them at 7100 bought a ton at 6440 you can see how this is a significant level look at what happened price blew down in this entire week almost the entire range of this thing uh, pushing 600 pips and it's now sitting there now this is the tricky spot right here is what happened on Friday's Friday's close um, here's the big key 
if this price level holds and, and price starts pulling back, we could see a kick butt bounce back into this range. Or we may find that this old range is no longer going to be in effect. You can see that this broke it, broke out into a different range. At one point came as low as this, this 6,000 mark um, about a couple months ago. And uh, but I would love I would love to see this euro strengthen back up again against the New Zealand dollar, and we see this thing weaken off and continue to hold this key level. If it does, we could see a significant um, buy opportunity right in there. In fact, we are in this pair right now. My uh, pro members got in this pair on Friday at 64.15. It says 64.12, so we're right at um, a break-even mark on that pair. And you can see that the price did come down a little bit deeper. In fact, look at this. Uh, we don't want that. We'll just undo that. And you can see the price came down as far as uh, 63.66 and is pulling its way back up. Now, that could have just been um, the market slowing down for the day because it was coming down to the end of the New York session. Or <laughs> it price just isn't going to hold below the 64.40 range for very long. If that's the case, then this trade could could really work its way back up over the, over the next few weeks, and we could pull up some significant pips on that. But you can see here, you know, price has been range bound for the most part at this level. We've taken a lot of trades in this range at 6440 over the last couple of months. Uh, so let's get over to the EuroCAD, which we are also in. This price pulled in. Now this thing has been range bound like crazy. Let's just go straight to the daily chart and take a look at what we're looking at. You can see how this pair has <laughs> ranged in channels so beautifully. You've got a, a base here, a base here, and a and a support here, support here, and a resistance point here. Um, as price broke down through a different uh, support level below this support, this and this, you have two kind of two kind of, two support levels kind of working their way in at the same time. Beautifully done. You can see how it's actually fighting in here, right? And uh, came down this old resistance point became support like I talked about in my webinars support be when, when you get a support level and price breaks down through that support becomes a new resistance and it's been range bound into that into this ever, ever since now we bought right in here because this was a major uh, uh, turning point price had broken had really exploded up here in the euro CAD for about a week and we had a, a resistance level here it fought for a little bit and then exploded down just as fast, in fact, actually faster, twice as fast as it went up. So it kicked off of that pretty good. So we took a buy position here off this key level, and now we're going to hold and see, and see what happens. If the euro <laughs> balances back out and the selling pressure slows down on the euro for the next few days, we could see this pair start working its way back up again, uh, at least up into this point here. Uh, which would take it to, you know, if we could see the price pull back up into this, into the range, we could see price come up to 47. Uh, we, you know, we could pull out uh, 260, 270 pips out of this trade that we're in now. Uh, but the next level, if it breaks down too much further, we're going to end up closing out. And then I would wait for a <laughs> buy position to buy right here or right in this range right in here. So uh, that's what we're looking at, EuroCAD. And let's see what we have on dollar yen a lot of the yen cross pairs are really tricky to trade right now they're just kind of exploding very rapidly right now uh, which you gotta be very careful of because you could see a reversal on those very much I don't see anything on euro yen I'm gonna whip through some of these if I don't see anything good I'm just gonna whip through them guys it does not take long if you've been doing this for a long time like I have I can actually look at the charts a lot quicker than the average person okay this pair right here we're kind of in a sideways channel, really ranging between this 1.7 and <coughs> this in here. But, but we're also seeing a slight, even though it's, it's, it is uptrending, uptrending, uptrending. It's, it is still slightly pushing up. You can see there's a little bit of a bottom right there. You see that? So it is pushing up. It is pushing up. Uh, I, I, I think we missed a trade at 1.6 the other day. We should have got definitely gotten in that trade. I think, I think for now we're kind of in limbo. I'd be very weary to sell again after this, we've hit uh, uh, this 1.7 level t twice and rejected. Um, you could you'll see a small bounce at 1.7. So if we get to the 1.07 mark, we will see a bounce. Uh, you might be able to scalp that 
and it could have a turn around but with this thing trending up like it is I would expect that as we're pinching up into this range and squeezing squeezing that we're going to see price break through that and we're going to continue to see that thing fly up or that we could there's a high potential for that so I would be careful of selling this pair I would be more look, interested in, in finding a buy opportunity right around in this 1.6 1.6 1.06 or 1.062 range on that. Swissy, uh, I just have not been screwing around with the Swissy very much. Uh, this thing is very bouncy and it shifts all over. I don't really like trading the Swissy anymore. Ah, oh, now here we go. <laughs> okay, guys, so we've spent probably the last 15 minutes jerking around, looking for uh, and and looking at trade opportunities. But now we're we're going to see if we can actually find a good one here. Pound dollar, <laughs> looking beautiful. This is the monthly chart. And you can see that it, it has been slowly but surely for a while. It was <laughs> working its way in kind of a, into a, a kind of down angled channel. And this key level held here for a while, th this trend line, broke above that. I'd be looking for price to pull back to 1.6, uh, maybe not quite that low. And um, down into this range here, I'd have to see what the number is for a buy opportunity. Now, go into the weekly chart and see what, how it looks. Um, again, a key level here at the at uh, 1.59, great key level actually. Let's look at where else we have levels that seem to get a lot of bounce off of right there. 1.63, or right above it. All right, I would I would expect price to pull back down to here and, and down to 1.63 range and and have a bounce up. Uh, I have seen we've we're seeing some consolidation that prices going up and pulled back up and pulled back up and pulled back. So we could be very care very careful of that we could be seeing some that the bulls are are starting to lose the battle, uh, and that the bears are might take over and this pair could break down into this range. If we can get a price pull back down to one fifty nine hundred, we would have a killer trade. Uh, but we're far from that. We're five hundred pips plus away from that. I would say on the short term level. Using more of a four hour chart, I would be looking for a pullback at <coughs> the uh, 1.6 range. Just look at the four hour, see how this is starting to look. It's near, that's, we, got, we got some right in here. Yet yeah, I'd had to see price pull back down to that range here. Before I'd want to take a buy because you got to start looking at the daily range of these pairs. If price tomorrow could break down 100 pips and hit this, we would see a bounce off of that because just because it breaks past this daily range. So potential opportunity around a 1.63 ish, a little higher, 1.6320. The pound loves a 20 and 50 marks for a trade on that. All right, let's make sure I'm still recording. Got it. Okay. All right, let's look at Pound New Zealand. Now, this is <laughs> this pair is so fun to trade, guys. And this is, you know, I believe in simplicity when you're trading, guys, and um, or in gals. So look at let's look at the daily on a weekly and a monthly chart. You're not going to see much, but on the daily chart, the picture says a lot. Price has been running since about uh, June of 2013 for the last seven months. And a nice, gorgeous-looking channel. Price would go all the way up to 2.0050 range, and break down. Now, a couple times it broke, you know, significantly above that, um, a couple hundred pips above. In fact, it just did a few days ago. Um, I totally missed that trade. But for the most part, this pair has really been ranging between 2.0050 range. And this uh, right above the 1.9 range. So what we've been doing a lot is taking some buy positions down here several times. We sold several times up in here. I've bought a few times right in here. And price significantly had a push down with the pound New Zealand. Um, in fact, let's see how on Friday this pair <laughs> ran, um, let's see, a high. Let's see, 20086. We're talking about 350 pip move in one day. And now it's pulled back up. So right now, we're, we have this drawn some different key levels. Uh, we have a key level right in here. 
I would expect if a price if price could come down to to the 96.30 range, 37.96.40, that we would see a a bounce. Um, and we also have a key level right down here in this nine level um, that we would see a bounce as well. In fact, let me draw that in here. Right around there is pretty much right on top of this little mini trend. So as far as you know, we've seen as low as 89.02. I've been putting big stops on this trade because I'm looking for three to 600 pips. We've taken, I think over the last, <laughs> I think six weeks ago, we took a couple 600 pip trades. Um, uh, at least a couple of I did. Um, I let this pair run. I think of my pro members that we closed out a little early, and um, we. Um, but I let this trade run in one of my accounts, and I actually closed out at 645 pips, a big part of it. Uh, so anyway, I would be looking at this pair for a buy around 96.40 um, for a bounce right at this level here. And keep this. I would keep this tight. The stop around 80 pips. I like big stop losses, guys. I look for. I'm looking for. I'm mixed between a range trader and a position trader. I look for market swings, and I also believe because things happen all the time. When you leave 20 to 30 pip stops, you have to be in front of the market 24/7, looking at at short level charts and the 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 shorter level charts you're looking at one hour, 30 minute charts, things like that. The more you have to to be in front of the charts, you know we've built the service around the ability for our customers to be able to still have a job while they're doing some trading on the side. So uh, you know again, 96 37, 96 40 range. I'll be looking for a buy, 80 pip stop, and I'm looking for price to run back up to two. Especially since I could, I feel um, that the pound is continuing to strengthen up. Uh, that we're going to see the pound really tighten up more, and we should see this thing run all the way up to two. You know, up to this level here, to uh, 2100, 2.1 that is, and um, pull out our profits around then. So we'd have a nice, pretty nice run up. We could see a 500 pip run on this trade. All right, let's look at Aussie dollar. Aussie dollar is just gone on a weakening, uh, weak a weakness spree for quite a while, then pushing this way down. This is the daily chart you can see for quite a while. Let's look at the date here. Um, since October of 2013, it's been October 23rd-ish. It just started working its way down. So we are definitely on a downtrend run right now. Uh, let's draw out some, some key levels here. We have a key level right in here, which price is kind of at right now. And now we're at a determining point. Is price going to continue down, or is this base right here now of 8,900 going to hold? And we could, are we going to start seeing the swing back up? So that's what we're going to be looking for. Um, over the next few days, I'll keep a, keep an eye on this. I'm not going to take a trade on this now, but if if you know we want to trade with the trend. However, when you see these significant points, these key level, these key turning points, we could be seeing the same thing over and over again. Uh, price tends to uh, trade based on historical um, um, key levels, and when we see price pull down to that key level that it has had major reversals on before we will tend to, to see that and so we are sitting here you can see how price is going down 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 and now it's kind of going sideways all right you can see it's kind of working its way into a sideways channel and so we got to determine now if it's going to break above this and then we need to be looking for buy pullbacks for a buy opportunity um, if it's going to continue to break down, then I would wait for price to pull back to 8900 for sell. So it's going to we'll find out that over the next few days. We'll see what price does. We'll kind of hang tight on that one. Uh, let's look at Aussie Swiss. Yeah, I really don't like this pair all that much. I don't trade this one very much, but sometimes I've taken several trades off of that. Aussie Yen, one of my favorites. Uh, again, the market's been killing the the uh, Aussie, but it's still going a bit in the sideways channel. I'd be looking for a buy. At 91.15, 91.20 range, um, and this is a pair I don't like to sell much. It is working its way down. So you can see if I can draw just a slight trend line. That price is kind of working its way downward a bit, kind of in a. <coughs> let's see if we can draw another one here. See how it's kind of doing that. We are at the top of this, um, and you know whether that channel is going to hold or not. The Aussie Yen is a little bit different pair to kind of trade because once um, the carry trade, because the interest rate differentials between the Yen and the Aussie dollar are so great 
that this is a pair that a lot of, of banks, a lot of in institutional investors, long-term investors like to buy and hold for the overnight interest rate differential. And so <laughs> this is a pair that once it starts going up, like way back in here, uh, when would this been October 2012? You can see how it just shot up and held for a very long time. So we got to watch out for that because as price begins to correct itself and pull back, we're going to be looking for opportunities for this to carry trade to kick back on and have this pair shoot back up. So I would just be wary what's going on here. Keep an eye on the Aussie yen to see if price starts shooting back towards into this range. If it does, we're going to be we're looking at this range could be holding, and I'd be buying at the bottom of this range. But this again, I don't. This is a pair I do not like to sell very often because once that carry trade kicks in and people can carry this thing up for a long time and price it can move significantly. Aussie CAD is another pair I don't really trade much. Aussie New Zealand dollar sometimes, lately it has not been that great. Uh, there's been some times where this pair has really done some crazy things, some great things. Um, it is down trading to Aussie. It's been weakening heavily against the New Zealand dollar for a very long time. Um, See, New Zealand dollar, U.S. dollar, love this pair. <laughs> it goes range bound very much. We look at the monthly chart on the New Zealand dollar. You can see that it stays in this range a lot. <laughs> this is, it, it works beautifully. Now look at this, this 77.7745 mark. Um, how it's held here so many times. You could have taken trades here over uh, just significant trades based on that. Um, and so, you know, I would be looking, of course, this pair hates 8,500. Uh, it doesn't, it rejects off it very, very well. If we can get price to move up to the 8,500 range, we'd look, be looking for a sell. Uh, we're very far from the 7,745. Again, we're looking at the monthly chart. Um, so let's look at a weekly and daily chart. Let's see if the weekly chart is giving us anything. Again, more confirmation. Oops, I didn't mean to put that in there that uh, this 8500 mark is a great opportunity to take a sell. In fact, the way this is kind of working its way down, I can see this thing exploding up over the uh, next week or so, and I, I, I wouldn't doubt if we would hit the 8500 mark, take a sell position there. Make sure I would put a stop above this last swing. That's pretty high though, man. That's that's a 200 pip stop. I don't, I don't like using stops that high. It's not the size of the stop that makes a difference. It's not adding any more risk. It's just the bigger the stop, the less amount of lots you can use. And so we want to always try to find the best stop and point that's going to to give the market room to breathe so that we don't get stopped out. However, uh, we don't want too much of a, tr of, of a stop to the point to where we are trading one lot. I mean, you want to get in there, if you're trading 50, 60 lots at a time, uh, if you have to double the size of your stop, you have to cut the amount of lots you're using in half. So you're hurting your risk to reward. We want to have a high risk to reward on our trade. So we're looking at to go to the daily. Now the daily shows us a little bit different story. Uh, the 8500 range is still good. You go on the weekly chart, the 8500 would be a killer spot to take a sell. But <laughs> the um, New Zealand dollar on the low end We've got a killer little base here at 8100 that if we can get price to come down into that range, I would even say slightly above, um, that we could be taking a, a sell here. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to put, not a sell, a buy, I'm sorry. I'm actually going to put a buy order in here and a sell order in here. I know we're in between, but usually what happens is, is price pushes to the, ex the extremes of the range, push down, boom, we could see a bounce up, or if it pushes up, we'll see a bounce down. And oftentimes, as, tr as pairs go through these ranges, and tr like this, this is back to the weekly chart, I will have a sell position already here and a buy position already here, and I will trade these bounce as, as price bounces between those those two pairs. And so I trade those ranges. In fact, if you've read my seen my, my range trading strategy, it works very, very well. It's a long-term trading strategy. Um, you can use it on monthly charts, weekly charts, and the strategy works on a four-hour chart. Um, so there's what, that's what I would do on New Zealand US dollar to see two potential trade opportunities sitting on there right now. Let's look at CAD yen here real quick. Now this is a trade a, a pair that I trade sometimes, not all the time, but you can see here. <laughs> I just want to show you this real quick. When it comes to the key level, see you can see price is moving its way up, moving its way up, moving its way up. It's been working its way up for quite a while. In fact, if I zoom out, up, 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 up. But you can see here, right in this range here at 82.36 range ish because obviously it breaks through a little bit. Um, 
<laughs> price is held pretty well. You can see that when you have a, a level that prices continue to hit and bounce, hit and bounce, that we could see an opportunity if price would come all the way down, which we're, you know, 600 pips away from that happening. So it's not going to happen anytime soon. It could be a month. It may not even happen for a long time. But if price, when, when price does come back down to 92,636, which it will, we're going to see a we should see 90% chance a strong bounce off this trade. So that's what we're looking at. We look at the trend. The trend is going up. We wait for the pullback to a key level where price would hit and bounce, and we take a buy entry there, and, and we and we then continue to manage the trade from there. Once price gets up 40 to 60, 80 pips, we like to close 50% of our position, move your stop to break even, or even two pips, two or three pips and above into the money, and let the trade run. So anyway. I, if we can get price to come back to that point, then I would take that. On this, on these yen cross pairs right now, I'm only taking longer term approaches on these trades. Uh, let's see if anything on CAD Swiss. I don't see anything on there. So guys, that was the analysis for the day. Hope you got something out of it. Sometimes the price uh, price uh, uh, is really trending strong, that it, and it visually you can see on the charts a lot of opportunities. In the last three weeks, you know, this, we just got through the holiday season. Right now, traders are just now coming back into the market. Usually, from the middle of December, um, actually it was worse, you know, is, is end of November, but really middle December to January 7th every year is when the market is kind of the weirdest because a, a lot of traders and institutional traders and in small traders, who you know, are kind of on vacation, they're chilling out for the year, and so everybody knows that, and so a lot of people don't trade, so therefore the volume and liquidity are kind of weird in the market. So you just don't see a lot of opportunity. In fact, December, even though we had a profitable month, it wasn't that great. <laughs> you know, I think we closed out 100 and something pips for the month. Um, it, it wasn't super significant. But now that we're getting back through all of that, and people are, are recovering from the holidays, and traders are cracking their knuckles, jumping back in the game again, going to start seeing a lot more volume back in the market over the next few weeks and we should see the um, key levels begin to form key levels holding very strongly we should see a lot more opportunities in the market um, you know what as we're speaking of this and I'm talking about this I'm looking at this chart as we're talking um, I do see a potential opportunity if price would come up on this CAD Swiss I would sell this pair at 72 uh, 25 uh, because we're at 8508 now and price has been working its way back up. But you can see this has been a pretty significant key level and it is downtrending very strongly for quite a while. I would take a sell at 8726. So anyway, that's the end of today. And um, hope hope you got a lot out of this and we'll see you on the other side. Folks, I hope you enjoyed today's training video. If you have not done so already, stop this video now and go to tradeadvisorpro.com forward slash free and register absolutely free for free Forex training, free Forex training videos, and free Forex traded alerts directly to your inbox. Go to the website right now and register for free. All kinds of goodies for you. Thanks a lot.